Hey guys, and welcome to today's first impressions video, the video game series in which we look at a recently released game and I give you my first thoughts and impressions on them. Today we're looking at Ironsmith Medieval Simulator, which is pretty much what it says on the tin. You play as a blacksmith in medieval times and you are tasked with making many different things from horseshoes to weapons. I'm going to be honest, it's a game that could be better if it wasn't for its technical problems, uh, its pure graphical fidelity or lack thereof, and its god-awful design choices. The base of the core game is fun and interesting, but there's too many things that make me just not want to keep playing it. But as always, we'll look through the settings first, and then we'll jump straight into the game and show you what I like and what I don't like about the game. Let's not waste any more time. Okay, so the settings menu. There is quite a lot here, but the thing that irks me the most is the way that it looks. Because like with most of the other things in this game, it just looks unfinished. It looks rough around the edges and it, it's a shame because this bit looks really good it's all in fairly nice font it, it you know lights up as you click on them it doesn't pick up the controller unless you have the controller on or plugged in when you start the game up um so it doesn't pick that up so i don't know how good the controller is but it works perfectly fine with keyboard and mouse the problem arises when you click on something you get this really horrible block options here. And I don't know why they didn't just have the rest of it like this with a, a purely transparent background with the same sort of font and everything. Like, it's just, it's unfinished and it's unsightly and I don't like it. And then you've got keybinds, which is correct. And it just, again, leads to more feeling like that it's just unfinished you know it, it's just a shame because it could look really good the other problem i've got with it is that whenever you hover over something you get this like sound effect i've also noticed that the uh, menu up here kind of glitches out and i don't know if that's meant or not but how it looks aside the menu isn't bad so you can change your language you've got your mouse um binds which are you know, your, your sensitivity and whether you want it inverted or not. Your key binds, which you can pretty much rebind everything, which is nice. Audio doesn't start at 100% and the auto, auto, audio quality starts at low for some reason. I'm not entirely sure why. But it's nice that the volume isn't so loud that it blows your head off. Video settings. The video settings and the advanced video settings are disappointing. There's a fair amount here, but the game has motion blur on by default, and it looks horrendous. Um, you don't have any sort of real control over anything. It, you've got your frame rate, your V-Sync, your resolution, window mode. It does start in borderless, which is nice. Your field of view, and then your advanced is just AA. Again, it's quality and not a number amount, which is a shame. View distance, effects, lighting, textures, 3D resolution, and foliage. It would be nice if they added some accessibility options. And for the love of God, give us a reason or a way to turn off motion blur. The other issue I've got is that the text in game and the voice acting doesn't really match up. And again, the text is all over the place. It's different fonts. It's not finished. If they get that sorted and if they get the menu looking nice and if they get the, the text in game looking good, then the game will be a lot easier to play. It's just this mishmash of like your basic font followed by settings with the nice font that look finished and well and done. It's a bit of a shame. But let's jump into the game and show you what I like and what I don't like. All right, we're in the game, and graphically speaking, it does look rather nice. Like, it's not a bad-looking game, all things considered. The models are pretty decent. There is a slight texture issue, and they sort of pop in every now and again, and you know. But there's some nice little details here. So the game as a whole doesn't look terrible. 
But as you can see, there's this weird stuttering going on, so it's not greatly optimized. And this sort of motion blur when you move the mouse is, it's just not nice to sort of look at. It's a bit nauseating. The storytelling in this game is a bit weird as well. And another thing that I don't understand why they've put in the game, but you have to go through two tutorials. Now, the basic, and I use that in quotation marks, tutorial that you get before you even enter the game is okay. It's very in-depth, but you just do the same thing again when you load into the new game. And it doesn't tell you about things that you do in the full game because we haven't even got to the weapons part yet. We're still making, like, items. And it's a bit weird. It's like... The basic tutorial is more like an advanced tutorial where you actually make a weapon. Whereas here, you're just making horseshoes and nails. Also, the fact that you've got these sort of markers for everything, which are just there all the time, is a little bit annoying and a bit confusing because you've got these things that you've got to do in the top right hand side, but it doesn't order it very well. So you can do things out of place and you can... Um, get a bit flustered when you're going round but basically the idea is that you need coal and you need ingots and you need wood in order to make your furnace work now you have a decent supply and it will take you five pieces of coal and an ingot to do what you need to do you also need some wood and then you've basically got to keep the um the furnace at a temperature of 1600 degrees which is fine the only problem I've got is that pumping the bellows here is it's a very tedious process because it highlights to say that you can do it, but it, it's on an automated cooldown. So you can't actually do it. You can't do what you need to do. Also, you're going to have to get used to the fact that you are going to be dropping things that you don't actually want to drop. You need to unlock more slots to be able to really make this useful. Um, but hey, here we are. This is just a thing. Right, we've got coal on there. And then you start the furnace. And that will get it going to a nice good temperature to get it to 1600. As you can see, we're at 1550-ish because I haven't got enough coal. I don't know why you need specifically five coal at all times, but hey, that's game mechanics. The actual crafting of the items isn't terrible. It's very simplistic and it's got like a, almost like a bonus, if you like, a, a bonus feature where you can get more stats on something if you, um, if you hit them in the right point, but it doesn't really tell you what that point is or how better to do it it just it's kind of a thing so we've got to form a sickle blade we've got to put an ingot on the anvil and forge some more nails and you've got to take a tall hilt from the shack uh, assemble all components on the workbench by placing them on it etc so you heat the ingot up once the ingot is at full heat you take it to the anvil smash it into place then you go to the workbench and you get your tool hilts and everything to complete the thing. And then once you've done that, you are able to um, take it to the person who is waiting for the order, complete it, get paid, carry on. And then as you go through, you level up, you'll get more experience, you'll unlock more things and you'll be able to take on more complex jobs. There is a story to it. Although I don't quite understand what that story is. It doesn't really make a lot of sense. There is RPG options where you can basically choose different answers, but it doesn't really change much of anything. When I say the text in the game is a bit odd. So at the minute it's all nice. You've got everything where it should be. It looks great. And then you talk to them and you get this weird semi-opaque bar next to the name which isn't spaced correctly and this font is a little bit higher than this one and then you get this again a weird opaque bar at the bottom with the same text as here just in bold it's too many different fonts it looks unfinished and it's just it's not great i'm not a fan overall technically and you know how the the game works and stuff it works fine it's a bit jittery 
and the actual making of the stuff is quite fun it's just that the quality of um the the actual quality of the rest of the game kind of lets it down and makes me not want to play the very first thing that they need to really do is to just tidy everything up and get rid of that really horrible icky motion blur that comes with it if they do that this game is on to a winner and i know that this game is fairly early access and has a fair way to go before it is fully complete if you like but it would be nice if they could get that done fairly quickly because it's got a lot of potential this game but as it is i can't recommend it because it's it's too jarring it's too disjointing i can't I physically can't deal with it. It's making me not want to play the game. It's making me not enjoy the game as much as what I maybe could. There you are, guys. This is Ironsmith Medieval Simulator. It came out on Steam on the 9th. Oh, no. I don't want to do that. I want that one. Check it out. Let me know what you think. They also need more inventory space. They they genuinely need more inventory space. It is horrible. <laughs> I hate it. But there you go, guys. Let me know in those comments down below what you think. Thank you very much for watching. And I shall see you all next time. Ciao, ciao.